there are multiple benefits to consuming dairy. Dairy contains a host of minerals and vitamins and nutrients, and these nutrients are essential for human function. For example, magnesium is very important for muscle function and nerve transmission. It's also very beneficial in regulating blood glucose and blood pressure, and it's also important for DNA development and bone development, as well as protein development. It also contains potassium. Now, potassium is also important for that muscle and nerve function that I mentioned, similar to potassium, similar to magnesium, but it is also very important for kidney, proper kidney function, as well as heart function. And one of the most important vitamins found in dairy include vitamin D. Now, vitamin D helps absorb calcium. We know that we need it for bone function. It also helps prevent osteoporosis, which is really important for us as we age, especially women who are reaching the age of 40 into the perimenopausal transition state. Now, it's also important for brain function and immunity and helping us fight against bacteria and viruses. So vitamin D is a really important vitamin that I want to dig into. You know, I spoke about it in my last video about the health benefits of vitamin D and how it can be very important for you, especially if you're in attempting to shrink fibroids. If you have fibroids or myomas or leomyomas of the uterine lining of the uterine wall or even outside of the uterus, it's going to be important for you to consider vitamin D vitamin D and how it can be a benefit to you. Now, outside of vitamin D, which might be, you might be taking a prescription for vitamin D, or you might have just taken it over the counter to boost your vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is found in dairy. There are other food sources that I will get into later in the video, but for now, I just want to talk about dairy because there is conflicting information out there on whether dairy can be helpful in shrinking fibroids or it is a culprit in, ex in exacerbating fibroids in the growth of fibroids within the uterine lining. Now, in a nutshell, I want to talk about high fat dairy products, which is usually the issue because these products contain a high amount of hormones, steroids, and other chemicals that we may not be aware of and that lead to inflammation within our bodies. I want to talk about bovine somatropin. Now, this is a hormone that is given to cows who have just given birth to a calf. And the reason why this particular hormone is given is it encourages the mother to lactate more than it normally would. So that is how we are currently consuming dairy is cows are given, lactating cows are given a hormone to help increase the production of milk, not for the calf, but for us humans for consumption. And there are other hormones that are injected into cows and calves to increase their meat production, but this particular hormone is given to increase the milk production. And if you didn't know, now you know. And so this is usually given for a period of eight months because most cows, to my understanding, from what I read online for through the FDA website, lactate only to about 10 months. But even with that being said, there are multiple research articles that state otherwise regarding to dairy and fibroids. And we know that the main issue with fibroids is a hormonal issue. And you hear, if you haven't heard already, you, you may have noticed that there are a lot of research articles and health guidelines that do encourage you to stay away from meat, do not eat meat products, do not eat wheat products, do not eat gluten products. But with dairy, it's hit or miss. Some people will tell you that because they're lactose intolerant, they can even ignore eating dairy. 80% of the population is lactose intolerant, so that might be one of the reasons why some don't consume it. But when we're talking about fibroids and the complication, there are a few research articles and cohort studies that actually promote the consumption of... So in the Black Women's Health Study, a cohort study based in the United States, it actually prospectively studied the effect of dairy food on uterine fibroid risk and found that women who had four or more dairy servings per day had a 30% reduction in the incidence of fibroids. Now, when I read that, that was conflicting to me because I always understood that the amount of hormones found in dairy is causing disruption to our normal hormones. But this seems to say something different. 
And I'll leave the link to the Black Women's Health Study cohort down below. Now, there are other studies in Italy and China that also looked into dairy production and uterine myomas or fibroids, but there are conflicting results about the impact of milk and dairy products on the risk of myoma onset and growth. There was an additional study on African American women who reported a protective role of frequent milk and milk product intakes per day on myoma and onset and growth. And also there was a lack of association for ice cream, butter and cheese consumption and a weak inverse association for yogurt intake. So Milk components, including calcium and butyric acid, also seem to have anti-proliferative effects on myoma cells, which is really important to speak about here because often we focus, focus on vitamin D, but we don't talk about calcium or butyric acid. Now, there is multiple things to consider after I've read all of that. One, the data is conflicting. There is no real hardcore evidence that dairy can either help reduce fibroids or shrink fibroids or it enhances fibroids. What we do know is that each woman is individual in her journey. As I mentioned before, 80% of the population here in the United States is lactose intolerant. A majority of black Americans are also lactose intolerant. So consuming dairy isn't even on the plate for, or even a consideration for some women and women who are of African descent, and I mentioned this in my previous video, they have a higher risk of developing fibroids, especially as they're getting older, I should say. Now, that being said, whether or not you consume dairy, there are other ways for you to consume vitamin D. There are other ways for you to get in your minerals, your vitamins. Specifically, I'm talking about vitamin D because that is what we're focusing on in today's video and how if you cannot consume dairy, do not worry about it. There are some great sources of vitamin D that I want to mention to you outside of your supplements, which if you're not taking supplements, it is usually recommended for a woman who is between the age of 17 and 90 excuse me, 17 years of age and 90 years of age to at least consume 600 international units per day or 15 micrograms per day. So when you do go to your pharmacy to look that up, make sure you talk to your pharmacist or your pharmacy tech so they can help guide you to the right product that would be beneficial for you. And also if you are um, unsure about your levels, make sure you see a healthcare provider so that you can get some blood work done. I do advocate for getting your blood work done on a yearly basis. That is very important to know where you stand. And then also let me dive into what are some really good sources of vitamin D. So vitamin D is added to many breakfast cereals. Many of you already know that cereals are fortified with vitamin D, orange juice, yogurt, margarine, and other food products. But some of the natural sources of vitamin D include fatty fish like trout, salmon, tuna, mackerel, fish liver oils, are also great sources of natural vitamin D. Now there are other sources, but they don't have as much, including beef, liver, egg yolk, and also maybe mushrooms, but not that much. They provide very little. So that being said, I do want you to consider where you are getting your source of vitamin D. Vitamin D is a very crucial vitamin that's very helpful for shrinking fibroids. And if you are not going to consider taking in dairy, like you've never taken dairy, you're not interest, interested in dairy, and I'm talking about dairy that is based from animal dairy, not your cashew, almond, tempeh, or anything like that. I'm talking about plant animal-based, not plant-based dairy. So if you do not consume animal-based dairy because you are lactose intolerant or you choose not to, that is okay. There are other places where you can get your vitamin D to help you if you are experiencing fibroids. So with that being said, I'm going to ask that you watch my previous video on shrinking fibroids as well as how to manage your hormone levels and signs and symptoms that your hormones might be imbalanced. So specifically, I'm talking about estrogen and progesterone, especially for you women who are between the ages of 30 and 45, 50, who might be experiencing fluctuations in your hormones because of the menopause transition. So I do thank you for watching and I hope this video has been beneficial. Don't forget to grab my free health guide, which I will link in the description box below. And I thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.